So we're talking Mother's Day on the show today and uh, Jenny Powell is encouraging us to celebrate our mums for all they do for us. Jenny, how are you? Oh, I'm good. You know, as a mum, I'm obviously looking forward to uh, a big slap on the back and let, you know, mum, you're great and celebrating Mother's Day the way us mothers should. (laughs) <laughs> so what, what do you think you've got in store for Mother's Day? Are your kids really going to spoil you then? Well, that's the idea. I mean, you know, I try and play it down, but I am hoping there'll be a few surprises. My, my eldest, Connie, she's 21, so and she's quite thoughtful, actually. She always comes up with, a, you know, the right ideas and stuff. Polly's 13, so, you know, she's sort of buzzing around. She's bouncing off the walls just being a teenager. So I'm hoping between the two of them something's going to happen. Um, yeah, but we'll see. So what would you say then is the best thing about being a mum? It's, it, it's really interesting. And um, we did some research with them, one for all gift cards. And you know what? 69% of um, British mothers say that they, they, they just never knew how much they could love another person. Um, and that, that really rings true for me. I just think um, it's like an overwhelming, just amazing, unconditional form of love that you just don't, you don't feel until you become a mum. And it, and it continues, obviously, all the way through life. And for me, that's been just the best thing. I mean, really quite overwhelming. And the one thing I love most of all is just seeing, because, because Connie's at university, so she's 21, uh, and I've got an eight-year gap, so Polly's now 13. So, you know, uh, previously, they've not really been the right age to sort of, get on as well as they do now and I just love it I love it when um Connie comes home from uni and her and Polly get together and I'm just you know my heart's just full but those moments for me when I just look at the girls together is just my favorite thing about being a mum just watching them oh lovely what about the worst thing about being a mum then cost no I'm joking (laughs) (laughs) I yeah I'll be I'll be sending them both their expenses and there yeah there'll be an invoice for those when they're about 45 probably no uh the worst thing for me I think it's guilt factor really you know I think especially in sort of the my generation um of working mums you know probably you know uh, ones who sort of more and more now women are working and a lot longer and you know even me in my 50s you know I'm still working um that for me is the hardest thing sort of time I always feel like oh oh when I look back I wasn't really with Connie that much not as much as I should have been I was always away working and uh, same with Polly um to this day um and that's one of the things I think we punish ourselves a lot as a mum you know, you know, this massive guilt factor constantly. Um, And that that is tricky. And and really, we've got to put it, you know, we've got to put it in a box and send it down the river, because it, you know, we bring that on ourselves. And actually, most of the time, it's not true. Right. So, Ken, you mentioned there about being in your 50s. I have to say, you don't look it. And we've been watching you on our TV screens for as long as I can remember now as well. And you're one of these people who never seems to age. What's your secret? Everyone says that. They call me like Benjamin Button. I'll be called Jenny Button, I think. Um, <laughs> do you know what it is? If between me and you, I'll share yeah. this secret with you, Robin. But um, I sleep. I have like a nana, I call it a nana nap. And in the afternoon, I just, I don't sleep in my bed. I have to go and sleep in a different one, like Polly's bed or something. So I associate just napping in one particular bed. And I do, I can switch off and have a good sleep. And that and yoga. Yeah, stay bendy. I've been looking at I've been looking at your social media and there's there's lots of bendy photographs on there. There is, yeah, that's me. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it changed my life actually. Uh, and the girls just think it's hilarious, you know, because they're um, well, Connie as well. We share the same clothes, you know. I, I don't feel like there's you know any sort of um, any sort of reason why she can't borrow my clothes and I can't borrow hers because we're both quite you know. I, I, I stay current. That's the thing. You've got to stay current in mind and in body. <laughs> I looked at a photograph of the two of you earlier, by the way, and you look like sisters. You really do. Yes. it's Yeah, it's bizarre. I don't know whether Connie likes that or not. I think she does really. But yeah, she's... Um, we're like two peas in a pod, Connie and I. It's really bizarre. Um, but the ca- our characters, our personalities are completely different. She's very sort of... She's very controlled. She's really intelligent. Um, but also, she's not... She's not a show off, you know, she doesn't like the attention. You know, I walk in a room, I'm like, right, come on, where's the attention? But Connie cowers away from it, which I love, you know, I really love those qualities about her. 
she's a, she's more, far more inward and um it's that's an interesting thing about being as mum as well you know you just you just see your your children sort of grow and develop and half of it's nature half of it's nurture and you think or is it or isn't it um and it's just brilliant and and you know Pollyanna's very different to Connie she is out there you know she'll say I'm up for that I'll do this you know she walks into a room a bit like a mum and wants all the attention um but it's just wonderful to see them grow and and, and develop the way they do of course, you had a lot of attention from a young age. You were very young when you started in TV. I mean, that must have been fabulous. Well, yeah, it, it was. I mean, I prefer it then as to now. I think with social media and stuff, there's such a huge pressure. Whereas back then, uh, we're talking in the mid-80s, you know, I was 16. I didn't even have a mobile phone. I mean, they didn't have them then. I think we just, <laughs> Channel 4, we didn't even have Channel 4. That's how That's how early on I started. Um but for me, I suppose it was, um, it wasn't so much the attention, it was more the opportunities that I, you know, I was like, wow, at such a young age, I was sort of thrust into the limelight. Um, and of course, it was far more different than where there were just like three, four channels to yeah. watch. So the viewing figures were much higher. Um, and so, you know, you, you were sort of the sort of celebrity status had a lot more quality about it dare I say. Well, you know what I mean, though. I know what you mean. And I remember back then watching you, you were flying all over the place, interviewing some of the top A-list stars in the world, weren't you? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and at such a young age, you know, I don't know where the confidence came from, but um, I think I was just thrown in at the deep end. So I had to get on with it. You know, I remember interviewing um, Kylie Minogue and um, I had a dog with me. It was a Saturday morning show. and We had a dog, like a TV dog. And, uh, and the dog was supposed to be in my dressing room and it escaped and it, it went outside her dressing room and then did a big poo. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, I haven't even interviewed this woman yet. And already the dog's just plopped outside Kylie. Who, who'd have thought, you know? But I think I found the humour in things and um, that sort of gave me a confidence to, you know, um, um, interview sort of these superstars on the TV. Um, and, and also, I th maybe it was just because I was naive. You know, I was young and naive, so I was just like, yeah, okay, I'll have a go, you know. Top of the Pops as well must have been amazing because that was the kind of golden era of TV. And, Absolutely. you know, we miss yeah. these shows, don't we? We really do. Saturday morning shows I really miss. I wish that, you know, kids today had that that sort of whole Saturday morning routine and that culture, but they don't. They're all upstairs in the bedrooms on their iPads doing gosh knows what instead. Um, but, yeah, Top of the Pops was, um, you know, obviously I'd watched it as a child, then being given the opportunity and I think I was about 19 19 only or something like that wow. I was then asked to do it um I just couldn't believe it I stood up on that balcony that top of the pops balcony and I was like next to Steve Wright who I'd listened to as a kid you know on whatever radio station it was at the time like huge and um I just I just got on with it I just thought, wow, okay, well, I'll have to make the most of this. And I did, you know, but um, it was almost like I was, you know, it was almost like I paid for like the top of the pops experience. Like, you know, like I said, oh, could I have a go please just once for the experience? And, uh, you know, before you know it, you're called a top of the pops uh, presenter. But yeah, they were golden days, you know, really golden days of the golden age and the best music as well, you know, the 80s Boy. and 90s. Yeah, definitely. So I really enjoyed that. And I've been listening to you at the weekend. You've been getting up early at the weekends on, on Greatest yes. Hits and playing all those great tunes all over again. I know. It's like No Limits come back round with all the tunes that I used to introduce on No Limits, which is a show back in the 80s. Um, and then here we are again. And I've got, uh, I've got sort of songs from the 80s, 90s, 70s, 80s and 90s on Greatest Hits. So was the 80s then the best decade for you? The late 80s, early 90s were. I loved the Madchester time because I was up in Manchester at the time. So I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and overall, I think... Uh, <laughs> knowing that I'm still cracking on as a mum to this day is quite bizarre really but yeah and I'm always telling my kids about well Connie she's rediscovered the 80s music and I say you do realize that I used to introduce that on my music shows and she's like really we all dance to it at uni you know so it's quite interesting that we could share the love just coming back to Mother's Day to finish on was there any piece of yeah. advice that your mother give to you that you're now passing on to your daughters she always says, if anything ever winds her up, just, and she puts her hands over her head and just goes, just let it go. Let it go right over your head. And that's what we do. 
Brilliant. Fabulous advice there. Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great talking to you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Nice, nice to chat to you too, Robin.